Welcome back. I have recently been asked to show how to do this design, this type of design, in Inkscape Ink Stitch. And I am currently running Ink Stitch 3.1.0, I think. It has just released. The new version is out. It's no longer beta test. I recommend you go ahead and go get it. It is right here if you go to inkstitch.org. 3.1.0 has been released. This is the news part. If you want to get it, just click install Ink Stitch, your particular operating system, and you'll be able to download it from there. That is the new version is out. I will be doing sometime in the near future, I will be re uh, revisiting my Ink Stitch for Beginners series. Kind of starting over, doing a refresh on the new version. There has been a lot of changes, almost every one of them for the better. So I'll be going back on that and doing some more videos on that. But for now, I have been asked how to do this. I am doing it currently in the new version. You don't have to have the new version to do this, but the new version is always good. We like new things. I'm going to show you how I did this. And this is what it looks like. I'm just going to start over. Select everything. Delete. We're going to start over. I'm going to show you exactly how I did it. My current setup is a uh, width of 10 inches, height of 4 inches. This is kind of a design you don't want to do real small. It's more of a large front or back on a shirt, flag, whatever. It wouldn't fit in a pocket, at least not more than a a couple of letters or hat again not more than a couple letters so I'm doing a 10 inch by 4 inch wide and if you want to see mils uh, 254 mil by 101 mil approximately so that's what I'm running with and I'm gonna show you how to do this we're gonna go we're gonna go with system font so that's the lettering tool on the side of Inkscape and Type in your word. Yeah, I'm going to do small because that's what I did in the beginning. And you can do all caps. It works the same. And it doesn't matter. So, with this, to get the desired effect, I'm going to get rid of that outline fill. I'm going to go ahead and do a just a regular fill. You just want a regular color fill. And in fact, if you go to uh stroke there's no stroke it's got fill this is nothing but a fill this is a st system font and you kind of want to work with i'm going to go back to the lettering tool click inside of here you want a lot of space in between your letters if you don't have enough space you click spacing up here let me turn on my I think that's the one. Let me turn that on and see if that's it. Okay, yeah. So, um, I'm going to click the go back to the uh, system font tool. Just click inside that word. You'll get your tools back inside of that word that I just did. If you go to spacing, this very first one top left is where you're going to adjust your spacing in between letters. And you want that to be pretty high there's a lot of stuff going on in between those letters um i'm roughly at about 20 and and depending on what you're doing how big your piece is and all that all this is going to be subject to change according to your needs showing you the basics of how this will work so once you have that done i'm going to go ahead and click the uh the grab it tool whatever that is what is that selector tool okay and then that with the word I'm going to use selected, now I need to do path, object to path. Now Inkscape and Inkstitch are going to get along because before you do object to path, Inkstitch is going to say, I don't know what to do with that. Make sure you do object to path. Very important. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to control D, duplicate it. Now I have two of the exact same thing and I'm going to take the one on top in the objects layer one on top i'm gonna move that out of the way just it doesn't have to be great just move it now i'm going to work with the one underneath 
I need to go to path and path effects, which is this right here. And make sure you've done object path or you won't be able to do path effects. So if that path effects not showing up for you, make sure you've done object path. Now I'm going to do offset. Offset will go negatives or positives. On this lower object, you want to do a negative. I'm going to do a minus one. And you're going to see that shrink down a little bit. And once you've done that, now I'm going to go to extension, let's see, path, object to path, just to make sure you have, you have told Inkscape, this is what I want this path to be. And then there's no longer a active effect. You see, there's no effect here. Now that I've done that, go to ink, extensions, ink stitch, uh, tools fill, break apart fill objects, hit close, and now they are each its own path. And you can make these in the right order if you want to. Remember that ink stitch will stitch from the bottom objects up. So if you want the L to stitch first, it needs to be at the bottom of your objects layers. So I'm going to just go and tap that down button. That one's first. Uh, where's the I? The I is there, so it's going to be next. And I dot. Let's go ahead and put that down there. And we'll be next. U, X. So L, I, the other part of the I, N, U, X. So now we're in order. The order doesn't matter, really and truly. But now we're in order. And I have those as fill objects. I'm going to select all of those fill objects. And just because I like working in, in groups, I'm going to select all of them. And right click is not going to let me put, add it to group. So I'm just going to go ahead and go object group. Control G will also group. So that's my underneath layer in that group. Now all I have to do is select that uh, group parent to apply anything I want to inside it, to each one of those letters. So I can do extensions, ink stitch, params. And there you see it's starting to fill it out. You can do any kind of changes you want. You can do a, a contour fill is one of my favorites. I love the contour fill. Meander fill is another one of my favorites. I just love this. And I didn't, I'm, I'm not going to leave that, but uh, Meander Fill is my other one. And I usually have to set that down to about 25% for it to be something I can use. And this is just, I'm mostly just showing you options. There's your Meander Fill. And if you do that, unselect the underlay and it'll look a little cleaner. But we're going to go back to uh, just Auto Fill. And then under fill under at under the tab for fill underlay, I'm gonna set row spacing to two. That's just something I usually do. I think the default row spacing for the underlay is a little bit too dense. You can you can play around with that. You can leave it at default. It shouldn't matter too much in the long run. This will lower your number of stitches down just a little bit without compromising on the look. And go back to fill stitch. I'm pretty much done. I am going to do a trim after, which should select each one of those objects and do a trim after. If your machine will recognize the trim command from Ink Stitch, not all of them do. Hit apply and quit. So I'm done with that layer. I'm going to take this layer. I'm going to, more or less, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do the path effect. You get there from path and path effect. Same thing. I'm going to do a drop down, go back to offset again. And the last one we did a negative one. On this one, we're going to do a positive one. And make sure it doesn't say and after it's uh, all said and done, which it does. So a positive one, the other one's a negative one. And that just makes it a little bit bigger. After I've done that, now once you do that, once you do that, go ahead and do. Uh, path, object to path to make it stick. And then I'm going to push the left shift button and the X 
Nope, I'm going to push the X without the shift button. Gets rid of the fill. Now I'm going to press the shift button and add a color, which will give me an outline. You can also do that from the fill and stroke tool. No stroke, add a fill. Make sure your stroke style or your stroke width is should be at least 1.5 for this to have a nice effect or nice look. For the size and the detail that I'm working on here, 1.5 mil width actually works really good. Okay, so having done that, I'm going to go extensions, ink stitch, uh, tools, satin, convert line to satin. There's my satin line. I'm going to grab that whole thing. It's going to make me do it this way. So select everything in that and go path, oh, object, group. So now I can just select the whole group and line it up as needed. That looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. So we're, we're mostly done. I'm going to select that, that, uh, Satin stitch layer again. I must apply a couple of params to it. Ink stitch uh, params. The 1.5 mil is is fairly narrow, not terribly narrow, but fairly narrow. So on the uh, on underlay, I'm gonna see what a contour looks like. Does it actually end up being one line? That's not bad. That's not too bad. I can live with that. So I'm gonna do a contour underlay. Hit apply quit. And we are mostly done. I'm going to line these up the same way that I did the other, so they stitch in order. And it should be L. Oh, should be there. Okay, L. And that don't matter too much, I guess. Go ahead and pop that up so that the bottom of the eye works and then the top of the eye, the N, the U, and the X. Alrighty. So now we're gonna see what this looks like. Like the whole thing. Go to extensions, ink stitch, and visualize. We're gonna check out the simulator, which is what I had loaded up to view it in the beginning. And there we go. I am actually a little bit too far apart. On those letters so when you're doing this on your own I went with 20 space in between the letters of 20 drop that down to about 15 and see what it looks like if you like it or not and I'll show you how to fix it the manual way is select it push control to make sure it slides straight select it press control to select just that single object and then slide it over this is a little bit hacky way to do it, but it works. So you can see this, as long as you don't have too many letters, this works. I am holding the control, the left control button on each and every click and each and every slide. So that looks a little bit better probably. Do a, a quick visualize simulator. Excellent. Outstanding. And that's basically how you do it. And uh, practice a few times before you you do your final version see how you see how it's working for you see how it works the uh, the offset the negative offset the positive offset and it all comes together to create this that's how it's done have any questions drop me a comment down below email me dale at lowtechlinux.com I'll uh, don't answer everybody but I answer as many as I can I hope this helps everybody trying to do this sort of thing. Let's go ahead and just real quick, I'm going to select that 
satin stitch layer. I'm going to press shift so that when you press shift and select color, it's doing an outline color. And I'm going to do the same green. So that's what you usually end up doing. But that's how you change colors on the satin stitch. Hope this helps you out. Pretty short video. That's all for this one. As always, thank you so much for watching.